I'll be honest, I have no idea what the term meta really means. But I have seen it get, I guess for lack of a better word, tossed around a lot. And with that said, I don't think anything gets more meta than a show that features celebrities watching their own show. At least I'm pretty sure I used, if I used it correctly, that is, it's, I think it's, I think it's how it works. Anyway, good morning, happy Friday, everyone. It is Friday, it is nice and sunny out, as you can clearly see. I am having a pretty decent morning. A little bit of a late start, but I'm okay now. Um... So, yeah, after visiting my folks last night, you know, we'll actually, we'll, you know what, I will, well, here's the thing, I was going to say what I have for dinner, but that would reveal a, uh, a mom food, a very special mom food that uh, I want to save for a rainy day. But I can definitely tell you what I had with said mom food. It was uh, with rice and uh, peas, so uh, got a carb and a veggie in, so that's always nice. Um, after that, you know, I came back to my, uh, you know, my lovely apartment, and then I watched, um, Celebrity Watch Party, which, you know, was fun. Um, I mentioned that, uh, again, stars of their own show, watching their own show. I was referring to, um, uh, the cast of Full and Fuller House, watching Fuller House. Now, you know what, I guess I could probably, um, I guess I could probably talk a little bit about my experience with the Full House. Because, you know, I did grow up in the 90s, I mean, Full House was popular, yet it was that sort of show that really wasn't as good as many people made it out to be. But it was, I guess, maybe a little too innocent for its own good. Because, you know, pretty much every Full House episode consisted of, you know, some funny lines, a sort of conflict, emotional touching heart-to-heart -heart talk at the end. Step three, profit. That's pretty much what, that was actually four steps. But you get the idea. You can pretty much predict how every episode is going to work. And let's point out the let's point out the elf in the room. Full House is what made Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen household names. And the fact that they were never even invited to be back on Fuller House, which is the sequel to Full House, really does speak volumes with uh, the types of decisions they've made over the years. Anyway, so. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm really glad I got to see some of those actors again. And for the most part, they look like they're doing okay, which is nice. I mean, because sometimes you can, because one particular stereotype that a lot of um, actors fall into, especially if they were in like an 80s, 90s sitcom, is like after the show is over, they become like a complete wreck, you know, bad things happen to them. But I'm really glad that for the most part, again, except for maybe the Olsen twins, you know, the cast is doing pretty well. And, you know, you know, actors like John Stamos, Bob Saget, Dave Couillet, you know, they have pretty solid careers after Full House. So, you know, that's always good. And, you know, uh, even the, uh, even the uh, cast members from Fuller House that were portrayed, you know, uh, a Andrea Barber and uh, Jody Sweden, they're doing pretty good. So, yeah, it really was kind of nice to see um, to see him doing well. Anyway, for the rest of the Celebrity Watch Party, they saw Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the uh, Today Show talking about bringing back the NBA, which that'd be awesome if they do. Um, the Jersey Shore Family Vacation, which, okay, am I the only one who thought that grandma looked like a witch? I am not kidding. That, that grandma looked like a witch. And not like the sort of happy cartoon. Well, 
Actually, you know what? Yeah. Kind of like the cartoony time in a scary way. Um, Hostile Planet, which featured what can only be described as birds jumping to their death and trying to fly, which, well, that's nature for you. Um, the Shawshank Redemption I saw, which, I'll see, I've, I've seen the Shawshank Redemption. It's a fantastic movie, great movie. Easily one of the greatest movies ever made, arguably. And, uh, something called Magic for Humans, which, okay, I, I should probably get to watch that, but, um, yeah, I know I didn't really, again, it had not been for those two weeks where, like, the cable was just being so incredibly stupid, I would be doing, you know, more of my thoughts on somebody watch watching. Technically, I'm doing that here, but normally I would go a lot more into depth. So, with that being said, that's not what I want to talk about today. Well, for one thing, uh, Sean Evans told another story. Yes, yes, Sean Evans of a, a Hot Ones the Hot Ones host, he told another story. But not just any story. He told the story about his very first kiss. And it actually got me thinking as to my first kiss. So in honor of Sean Evans telling, being brave and telling that story, I'll be happy to tell you the story of my first kiss. But Nick, you said you were a loser in high school. Yes, I was. But, even losers get lucky every once in a while. I shouldn't really say it like that. That sounds so, that sounds so dirty. Anyway, I said this before and I'll say it again. I really was never that great of an athlete. In fact, of all the sports I ever played, wrestling was the one I was the most consistently good at. And even that was just above average at best. But if one thing, if nothing else, I can be thankful for what, you know, it gave me. You know, it gave me, it helped me build character. It gave me a good work ethic. You know, it got me thinking about, you know, life in general a lot more than I probably would have. So, yeah, so I can definitely say that wrestling gave me a lot. And, you know, not to mention... You know, good people, good coaches, all that stuff. But it was through wrestling that I would eventually get my first kiss. I'll explain, don't worry. So, it was a Thursday evening when I was uh, at Horsehead's High School. This was my senior year of high school. And Horsehead's was wrestling against uh, Maine Enwell. It's a school near the uh, Binghamton area. And we actually won. You know, I actually won my match. Uh, we actually won that match pretty, pretty handily as a team. And uh, during the uh, matches going on, I'm sitting next to a, one of my teammates. And I actually knew it, him and his family pretty well. And I could see his uh, older brother, you know, in the stands with his girlfriend and uh, another girl. And I leaned over to, uh, I leaned over to my team and I'm like, hey, uh, who's that sitting over there by your, uh, by your uh, brother? And you know, then he told me who she was again. I never named names, so don't worry. So after the match is over, we're all clean up. You know, I walked over and I you know, talked to her. And okay, there's actually one really cool part about this story. And that's, um. Naturally, during after the match, everyone has to help clean up. And there's one guy who, under normal circumstances, would have, like, snitched on me and told me to get back to work. But then he saw that I really wanted to talk to this girl. And he's like, all right, Carly, you go right ahead. I, I can cover for you. That was actually really cool. Normally, this guy was actually a real pain in my rear end. But this is actually one time where he was pretty cool. Anyway. So eventually I talked to this girl and I actually got her number, which at that time I'm thinking, holy cow, I actually got a girl's number. So I saw her more often. She went to the uh, Elmira Free Academy back when it was referred to as Elmira Free Academy, uh, Christmas tournament. You know, I saw her there. 
I kept seeing her more and more often. Here's the thing. She went to what was then referred to as Corning East. So she went to a completely different school than I did. So the only real way to communicate was, you know, by phone and, you know, text message. And I'll never forget. Um, now, here's the thing. I thought, I mean, I thought, I mean, to, we actually, we tried to agree on um, trying to say things slow. So I'll never forget it was on a snow day a couple weeks later when I asked her, you know, do you want to, you know, do something? And then right away she said something along the lines of, yeah, Nick, I'll be your girlfriend. I'm like, do I actually have a girlfriend now? Okay. So, yeah. I actually had a girlfriend. That's how I got my girlfriend. But you're probably like, well, Nick, what about your first kiss? I'm getting you that. Don't worry. So, you know, again, we don't, we can't really see each other that often because, again, we were in completely different schools and completely different cities. We're both playing sports. She actually played, she actually was a bowler for Corny and, you know, I'm still doing wrestling. So the times you actually have to see each other were few and far in between. Naturally, as you can already tell, it's already starting to unravel a little bit. But a little while, it was about maybe a week and a half before my 18th birthday. It was a Saturday evening. And I actually went to visit her over at the mall because... Around Saturday evening, that's when she got to work. She worked at the uh, Victoria's Secret at the Arnott Mall. And uh, I walked her to her car. We sat in her car. And emotions were really kind of riding high in terms of wanting to see each other. And, you know, sparks were definitely flying. So just during the um, the talk, you know, we were sort of leaning in and you know, it was just a simple, you know, like, pack. That's how it was. You know, I'm sorry if this isn't, like, anything sexual or it's, like, you know, crazy, like, crazy tongue, mouth. It was more of a sort of quick, you know, peck on the lips. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's how it happened. And that's, like, the gullible sap I am. I'm just, the entire time, after I'm just, like, because <laughs> I me, mean, it was my first kiss. You know, I didn't really, I didn't really know what to, didn't really know what to think about it or think of it. So, yeah, that uh, my first kiss was in her car. Pretty cool, huh? And you know, we saw each other a couple times after that, but eventually. It just really wasn't working. In fact, I know that, I mean, it's going to come across that she was being really bad, but I can explain this. She broke up with me over a text message, message the day after my birthday. And you guys were like, Nick, that's cool. I'll explain. I mean, we didn't, we barely saw each other at all. You know, we, you know, talking through text messages was really the only way to really communicate with each other. So, yeah, by all accounts, technically it is bad, but I can sort of, I mean, it's been over 12, it's been almost 12 years at this point. Actually, it's been more than 12 years at this point. I can let it go. It's fine. So, yeah. You know, my relationship with this girl lasted about three weeks. And... As short as it was, you know, I can be grateful. You know, I, I can actually say I had a girlfriend. I obviously got my first kiss. That's pretty cool. And, you know, it really is like the saying goes, tis better to have loved and to have lost than to have never loved at all. So, yeah. I mean, that being said, I wouldn't mind having another girlfriend. And, yeah, I've kissed you know, girls further on down the line. Sure, I have. I mean, I'm not, but you know, it's, it was just like a one-time thing when I ever did that. So, yeah. Um, 
Oh, I actually forgot kind of nice telling the story. I mean, if you're probably, I mean, Lord knows how this particular girl that I talked about in my, well, technically it is a story, but, you know, in, the, in this tale that I've woven, I have no idea whatever happened to this girl. I mean, obviously when I was in friends on Facebook, I mean, pretty obvious, I hope she's doing okay. And, um, yeah. So, sorry it wasn't as, you know, detailed and driven and entertaining as maybe Sean Evans told his first kiss story, but it's definitely my story. And I'll definitely stick to it. Partly because it's true. And partly because, you know, it gave me something that nothing can ever take away from me. And I can be proud with that. Just like I can be proud with how far I've come in doing videos, actually. Which, with that said, I hope you all liked what I put out today. You know, be sure to like and subscribe if you want to. Um, you know, I made this video. For, I'm very humbled I made this video for all of you guys to watch and enjoy for your day. I'm hopeful you all have a wonderful Friday. And remember, if you guys want to talk to Chad, I'm always going to be here. It's a little engineer. I'll always have your back. Take care. And make good choices. Although, interesting story. During the time I was in a relationship with this girl, and she was my girlfriend, it was when I took the very health class where I learned, make good choices. That's kind of meta, right? I still have no idea what meta means. Take care.